This show is a proud member of the Nerdy Legion Podcast Network. Get more at nerdylegion.com. Enjoy the show. This is Bright Side Home Theater. Hey, home theater nerds. Welcome to the Bright Side Home Theater Podcast, a podcast that focuses on the experiences we have in our theaters and uh, just all the different scenes and the movies that we like to talk about and, you know, the things we do to show off our theaters. And this week's Morgan in 4K from 2016, it's not exactly a movie that you would say, wow, that's a home theater movie, but I'm going to make the case that it is because I really enjoyed it. It doesn't have a ton of scenes in it like, you you know, like a blockbuster action movie would because it's not that type of a movie. Um, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to make the case that it is a home theater movie and I'm actually going to compare it to the streaming version. You're gonna. I'm gonna talk about the 4K disc as well as the streaming version on iTunes for $3.99, and uh, hopefully you you can pick it up either way and uh, see how you see what you think. All right, we'll get to that in a little bit, but let's say uh, my name's DJ, and uh, you can reach me on Twitter at BrightsideHT, or you can email me on bright at BrightsideHomeTheater at gmail.com. And you can find me and everybody else on the website at BrightsideHomeTheater.com underneath all of the episodes of the podcasts and underneath all of the featured theaters, you can leave a comment and we're getting com. We got a few comments this week came in because a few people I'll talk about in a little bit added to their theaters. So yeah. That would be great. Just go there. Everybody works really hard on their theaters. Take a look. Maybe you'll get some ideas for yourself and uh, let them know. And I'm also on YouTube now. For those of you not watching on YouTube right now, I am on YouTube. So check it out over there. Just go to Brightside Home Theater. You can find the link in the show notes. And uh, just uh, I'd really appreciate it if you're listening to it. Even if you don't watch the video a ton, hit subscribe because that's growing and i uh, I'm hearing great things. It's supposed to be a great thing over there. If you're growing over there, you're growing everywhere. So help me, uh, help me out. Check that out. Also, you can find me on Patreon. You can support the podcast by, you go to Patreon, search Brightside Home Theater, or find the link in the show notes or on the website. There's a big red button, donate. Uh, But yeah, so you give a, you give a little bit of money to Patreon. They give most of it to me, keep some for themselves, a minimum of a dollar. And, uh, it's a way to support the podcast because uh, all of this stuff that I use, it isn't free, but I do it as my hobby. So you don't have to do it. Absolutely isn't needed. I would do this for nothing. I would do actually nothing would be great. I'd be breaking even, (laughs) but this cost, you know, it costs me money, but all my hobbies cost me money. So, Hey, it's great. I appreciate everything. I appreciate all the support monetarily or by ideas. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But uh, I appreciate my 13 patrons still standing steady at 13. Thank you very much. And this week on Twitter, we have two new Twitter followers, Movie Blind Spot and Tom, the 2BK2 The Future. That's his Twitter handle on Twitter. I thought that was pretty cool. 2 two Back To The Future. So I thought that was cool. T- thank you, guys. Thank you for following my easy for me to say follow me on twitter you can also support the podcast by going to t public and picking from any of the designs and you can get coffee mugs you can get pillows i love pillows uh you can get t-shirts sweatshirts and there's a few designs there you can take a look at links for t public are in the show notes as well as on the website uh but you could go to t public and just look for Home theater, and it should come up. Brightside Home Theater. I have a quote unquote store there. That's what. That's how that works. But I yeah, and there's a t-shirt, COVID bunker t-shirt, and it has home theater crossed out, so it's Brightside COVID bunker. That one was my favorite one. 
All right. No movies and scenes this week. Uh, It's been a short week. We got, I just finished recording my podcast on Friday for last week. So not a big turnaround. Uh, If I missed anything, because, you know, I apologize. Just let me know and I'll talk about it next week. But we have some listener comments. We got a few come in this week in the short amount of time. First and foremost, uh, I put this at the top because it is breaking news uh, because it just came out today, the 20th, Tuesday, the 20th. Apple unveils the next generation of Apple TV 4K, making the best device for watching shows and movies even better. All in an all new Siri remote, innovative color balance technology and high frame rate HDR deliver the best entertainment experience at home. And thank you, Carl. He sent me this uh, article right away and I put it right in the show right away. I just saw it just as I was sitting down. And like I said, it's breaking news. And by the time you guys hear this on Friday, it's probably not breaking news. But what I really do like about it and the first thing I looked at, if you're on, uh, look at the remote. If you're on uh, YouTube, you can see the little remote in the corner. They changed the color from uh, it's back to silver now. But the remote has a mute button on it, which is huge. That's the first thing that I was looking for when I was when I saw the new remote. Because the existing Apple remotes, I have Apple TVs all through my house. The only place I don't use my Apple TV remote is in my theater. I use my Harmony. And uh, sadly, that one is all gone. But yeah, so <laughs> that's too bad. But I'm holding on to that for dear life. Take good care of it because they're going, they're very expensive. But anyways, back to the Apple remote. That's all of the other remotes in the house. If you want to just turn the the volume down for a second, you have to turn the volume all the way down. And adding in that volume, the mute button is huge. So apparently I'm not the only one that wanted them to add to that. So, and there's also a power button on the remote as well for the TV, which is pretty cool. So now you can pretty much put your TV remote away and you can run everything, your Apple TV, as we do. I know a lot of people have smart TVs. I run everything through my Apple TV. And I just find that it's easier if when we go on vacation, I just grab one, take it with me now. I used to use a little fire stick to do that. Now I just take the Apple TV, plug it in at the hotel. Good to go. Uh, Really enjoy that. So, and... I I can't wait to see maybe listening to like AV ran or the HT guys, maybe they're going to break down the high frame rate HDR and see what the the nitty gritty on that is and how that's going to work out. I'm interested to hear what Rob's thoughts on that, especially once we start getting these in house, it'll be cool, but I'll be buying one as ASAP regardless, because I love the 4Ks that I have now. So this has got to be better, right? It's an upgrade. That's how it works. It's supposed to be better. All right, moving on. Next piece, Steve George at Legal Beagle OK. Hey, Brightside HT, DJ, hope your weekend is going OK. Can you please add the two new picks that I DM'd you to my section of the website just to update the show and show off the new kit accessories? Thanks, buddy. And I did. If you want to head on over to the website, you can look up Cinema George. and That's at Brightside Home Theater. Dot com and just look up Cinema George under Featured Theaters, and I added two new pictures at the bottom there. And really cool, he has his uh, candy, and the new PS5 is in there. But it his his theater is always worth a checking out because it's just, I, I swear to God, he must dust it before he takes these pictures. It's just so clean. He's so, it's so spotless. It's so organized. It's, it, it I envy that because that's the look that I want, but I can never achieve because I'm all, my brain, and him and I have talked, DM'd back and forth. I'm like, I'm just like you. I just can't pull it off. Uh, but I'm like that with my cars. Love that with my cars. Very, very particular about keeping my cars clean and detailed and everything. So check that out. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Steve. Really appreciate that. Also, OD Photography, you are like the Jeffersons. You're moving on up. So last week's podcast about uh, oh, Mon- uh, Monster Hunter when I put in, I, I think I told you guys this before, when I put the 
the trailer in the YouTube video, sometimes I get demonetized. It depends on the movie. It really does because I, I've had movies that I've been demonetized. I've had other movies where they just don't care. It's just the trailer. Well, this one for Monster Hunter, I got demonetized. And then I got an email that I put out on Twitter. I said, look at this. They gave me my monetization back, which I don't make it. I, I'm not, I have like 85 views or something like per of those. It's getting bigger. Uh, Batman V Superman is actually growing. I'm up into the 200s, which is pretty good for that. But uh, for my reviews, and I'll talk about that in two seconds. But yeah, so OD Omar says, <laughs> he's like, oh, you, you're like the Jeffersons. You're moving on up. And you know what, Omar? Well, we're moving on up. Moving on up yes, we are. <laughs> See, I even have a soundboard now so I can add stuff in willy nilly, just like that. And it's funny, it's funny, Omar, that you said that. I call you OD, but I'm, I, I know your name's Omar, but I like your OD photography. So sorry if you're offended. If you're offended, let me know. <laughs> I won't do it anymore. <laughs> but yeah, I had that moving on up from my other podcast. My buddy and I, John and I, when we were first starting out, we got our first listener. We got this, that. We always use that moving on up. And we were like, and uh, what I was wheezy, I think. It's like, I think we had our nicknames and oh, we had a good time with it so i pulled that out of the uh out of the rafters there i hadn't used it in a while but thanks to you i was like hey i can use that now because i have a soundboard here so thanks a lot and moving on moving on to the next one uh reginald my buddy reginald at brightside hd new sony new tv sony xbr 55 a 8 h oled and he sent the two pictures i add those i added those to his uh, home theater over there at Brightside Eight Home Theater. If you check his out over there, uh, his was, I think it's Eucalypt's Theater because he had a koala bear in there. So that's why I think, I, I think his was that one. If I, maybe, maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. Sorry, Reginald, if it isn't. But you can check out his over there. I added those to it. Pretty cool. That's a really nice TV. Really, I mean, his room. I mean, he's sitting nice and close to this thing. I'm, I'm wondering, is that really high for you, though, buddy? Because uh, you have your center channel underneath it. But I was like, wow. <laughs> like, that looks really tall, especially because you have those tower speakers next to it. It's I love it. I love it. But I think it's a little too tall for me. You probably have to sit up or maybe you slow, lay down and watch TV. Um, but it looks really cool. Really cool. Thanks, Reginald. Really appreciate it. And then emails, we'll get to some emails as I started with the first one from Carl. Second one from Carl here, though, is he sent a link to a YouTube video, Panels to Pixels was the YouTube channel. And it's a, it's a, it's a movie or a video, I'm sorry. I, I think it's like 20 minutes long. It's really good. It's about 15 Marvel characters that are based on actual real people. And this first quote that I'm showing here on YouTube, with comics, you have an unlimited budget and you can use as many special effects, props, and actors as you want. And that's a quote from Alex Ross, the comic book artist. And he, they, they talk about him in here and they talk about a few other artists as well. And they use real life inspirations when they're actually drawing the comics. And I believe it was Alex Ross that actually said he used... Um, Oh, who I see now my brain, I should have put it in the show notes. I didn't, but a lot of the people like Tony Stark was already based on Howard Hughes. That wasn't Alex Ross. That was somebody else, I believe. Um, but Alex Ross, oh, who played, see, now I'm going crazy here. Who, who, <laughs> who played Professor X? And you guys can yell at me all you want. My mind's going crazy. I'm all by myself. Nobody here to help me out. I could, you two, I, eh, forget it. But you know what I'm saying. So anyways, I'm killing the I'm killing the flow of the show here. So yeah, so anyways, he had already drawn Professor X as I was hoping the name would come to me and it didn't. But anyways, he already drew him before he played him in the X-Men movies and that was his, you know, that was his inspiration anyways and of course he gets car uh, carved. Yeah. <laughs> he get casted in the movies. So that was pretty cool. And oh man, I'm an idiot for not knowing that name. But see what happens? My mind locks up 
And it's something, it's like, if you stump me right in the middle of a podcast like this, what's your wife's middle name? I know it's Lynn because I'm, I, I planned on that, but if you caught me by surprise, I'd have a problem. All right, let's move on because I'm having a heart attack here. I'm so upset. I can't remember his name and it's going to come to me in the middle of something. I know it. Okay. Next one is an email from Gorinder. Hi, watch Spider-Man into the Spider-Birth into the Spider-Verse a few weeks ago and must say it has been one of the best movie watching experiences in my home theater. And to top it off, I wasn't even in the money seat. I let the kids sit in the money seats. A mistake I will never make again. <laughs> even in the second row, it sounded terrific. LOL. It was loud in the second row, so probably a little too loud in the front row. I love the movie story, the way it it was animated and the sound was great. I really liked the sound effect when the Prowler would show up. The movie also gave the subs some good working. It is definitely a movie I will watch again. Have a good one, Garinder. And I replied, my first reply to him was, if you have 3D, the ability of 3D, you need to check this out in 3D. And Garinder and I went back and forth because he does say he does have the ability and he probably is going to check it out in 3D because I absolutely love this movie in the theaters. I've loved it in my home as well. And it's one of the first things that I wanted to watch when I had, when I first got uh, 3D capabilities, because when I saw this in the theater, I saw it in a regular, it was in the good cinema with the Dolby Atmos and everything like that. And it looked fantastic. But the entire time I was watching this movie, I was thinking that I felt like I was in a movie watching a 3D movie without the 3D glasses because the way they drew some of the um, the art, there were some lines that didn't line up perfectly, like red lines and blue lines, like almost like in the old days when you'd have the red lens and the blue lens and that's how you got 3D. There were a few lines like that. So I was like, I want to see what this looks like in 3D. So I sought it out in the cinema and found a 3D version and was able to go see it. And I was blown away. If you haven't seen this movie in 3D, you really should make an effort to check it out. If you can handle, I know a lot of people don't like it. They get headaches, but there are some nice, nice scenes in here. And the entire thing in 3D is really good. But any of the scenes where they use uh, the comic panels, it's like the comic panel is the screen, is the depth of the screen, and then whatever's going on inside it, you can see into the screen. It's really cool. So I, I really recommend that, um, you know, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse in 3D, I think, is is the better watch over the 4K. But the 4K is, it is really nice. Um, and the soundtrack on that is really, really good. So thanks, Corinda. Appreciate that. And the last thing, I meant to get to this a few seconds ago, a few minutes ago, but I got a, I didn't mention this, or you guys haven't heard about this yet, um, but in the middle of my uh, podcasting last week, I got a message on YouTube from this woman named Gina, and she mentioned that my BVS take was too long. So she's at the time she tweet she messaged me back. It was Friday afternoon. It was right before it was during my podcast because I got it while I was recording. And she said, you know, at, at over an hour, my review of BVS, she goes, it's a non-starter. She's like, I, if it's a review that's anything over 10 minutes, I don't even want to watch it. So, and, but she said it really nicely. She said, you know, so I didn't take it mean. I, I took it as constructive criticism, which was great. And I thought about it. So that's why I immediately went and put Monster Hunter out in a 10 minute form. It's under 10, actually. It's like a six or seven minute vi video that I put out. And it, all it is, is a, it's the spoiler free version on why you should get Monster Hunter. So I really liked that idea. And, and I hadn't thought of it and I didn't know how to do it, but then it was, it was, you know, somebody who isn't a listener who came across me on YouTube and saw like, look, every BVS thing is getting thousands of hits because of the, the Snyder cut and everything. Right. And here's my, my video that I put out. Now I know I'm small. I'm not upset about it. I had 88 views after a week and it's BVS. And she's like, I get her point. So I, I, I did, I took it to heart, but I didn't take it hard. I, I that's what I do. I like, Ooh, excuse me, my voice, <clears throat> I'm losing it, but I like it when people 
challenge me. And that, you know, sometimes if I can make the change, I'll make the change. So I did, I put it out and Morgan has done well, uh, not Morgan. That's what we're doing this week. I'm sorry. Monster Hunter has done. Okay. I put out the 10 minute version of that. That's uh, last I checked. It was only in the eighties, nineties for views. BVS, by the way, is up into the two hundreds. And for me, for one of my reviews, that's huge. <laughs> it's like, cause I, the, I'm just fairly new on YouTube and my reviews I know are long. And I did explain to her in my reply to her, I said, look, these, these are basically my podcasts and you know, I do get a good response from that. So that's not going to change. But what I was thinking is, is I'm going to start putting out bits and pieces on YouTube of the podcast of what I'm doing here and see what kind of response I get out of that. If it can help grow the show and, and grow the, expand the audience a, a little bit. So, but it also, I wanted to say to you guys, I'm always asking, you know, I'm saying if you want to support the podcast and the Patreon and all that, and it's like, whatever, I, I don't really care about the, I, I appreciate all the money, but ideas, if you have ideas and I have, I got a, uh, an idea this week for featured theaters for fe people that have featured their theaters. And uh, I know the listener is listening and he, and he helped me out with this. So I don't want to say it yet until we roll this out, but there is something coming for people that have had their theaters featured on Brightside Home Theater. That was a great idea. So I'm working on that. That'll be a little bit. But any ideas on how to expand the podcast, how to promote the podcast, what can I do? And it doesn't, ha it can be a criticism too, because don't, I am not afraid to be critiqued. I love the positive feedback, but it's, it's the negative feedback sometimes is just as important. It's like, DJ, you're not doing this right. Or, or maybe you need to tighten this up a little bit or, oh, you talk too long. I, I can't really help that as much as I wish I could. And I believe me, I've actually gotten better at it, but you know what I mean? Anything that'll help it, it, it. I'd really appreciate it because it'll help grow the podcast. It'll help grow the audience. I'd really appreciate that. And, um, so that was my little bit, my little spiel on another way you can help support the podcast. And, uh, when we roll out the featured theater, promotional thank yous type thingy, majiggy thing I'm working on here. Um, I'll let you know. And speaking of featured theaters, we don't have one this week and that is fine. If you'd like to have your theater featured on the bright side home theater, you can just email me, email me a description of your theater and um, well, I'll show pictures. You can email me the pictures. I'll show the pictures here on the podcast. I'll put them up on the website. You'll have your own little page with all of what, with your theater there. And this theater here, this theater, this podcast is about the experiences. So show me your theater, like what, like what it's like to experience a movie in your theater. It's like, I love to talk about the gear and I'll talk about the gear and, and everything like that. But a lot, if you go to the website and you look at the theaters, they all have this, this feel and, and a, you know, or something they're trying to achieve. And sometimes it just might be a single picture and there's an explanation like, this is what I'm starting out with and I'm going to get to this. But they wanted to start out and, they, you know, obviously support the podcast, but Whatever you have for a theater, you can just, you know, send me a picture and a quick description or a long description and we'll feature it here. All right. That will get us to this week's topic. And this week's topic, as I said before, is Morgan. Morgan in 4K. And I, ha I actually, I hadn't seen this movie. I'd owned it for a while, but I hadn't seen it. Uh, my wife and I tried to watch it a long time ago we i we wanted to watch it on like streaming and then we went back and forth and i ended up buying it so that we could watch it because i, I don't know but i chose it this week and i really enjoyed it and i think it could make a good home theater movie but i don't want to spoil it i don't want to spoil the rest of my podcast so why don't we play this trailer and then we'll get into the theater and we'll talk about it very happy to have you here, Lee. 
I imagine that's not exactly true. Doctor, this is Lee Weathers from corporate. I'm just looking for some information about Morgan. Morgan was our third attempt, our little breakthrough. It's the next step in evolution. It's bioengineered with synthetic DNA. Within a month, walking and talking. Within six months, it exceeds our wildest expectations. I'd like to discuss the incident, if that's OK. She had a tantrum. There was joy in her heart before we shoved her back in that box. You feeling a little sad, Morgan? Yes. Do you like it here? Yes. What do you like about it? I like my friends. Do you think they treat you like a friend? I mean, you think it's normal for friends to lock each other in cages? What would you do if I recommended that you should not be allowed to leave this room? What if I recommended that you be terminated? We should end this. Answer me! What would you do? Where's Morgan? Initiating lockdown. What you don't understand is... Ten. Morgan is still evolving. Nine. The people in this house are in danger. Eight. It needs to be terminated. Seven. Six. Don't be afraid. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. I'm starting to feel like myself. After weeks filled with gods and monsters and all of that action, I thought I'd think slow things down a little bit and do a movie like this. Um, a little bit more thought-provoking, fairly predictable as you go through it. But yet, it was I, I enjoyed it. It's like, I can't say this is a must-own for home theater fans, but I can say it's definitely worth the $3.99 rental on iTunes that has the 4K and HDR on iTunes, but it doesn't have Dolby Atmos on iTunes, so it's just a standard 5.1. Um, the picture? The picture on the 4K disc was nice. Um, that's not to say that it was bad. At times, it was had, had really nice deep blacks, and it was very clear and vibrant picture. But at other times, I felt it was a little bit washed out. Um, the images, the screen looked, some of the blacks looked a little too gray for me. And it wasn't appropriate to the scene. Like there's times in other movies where it's like atmospheric conditions that'll make the grays see, the blacks, the shadows seem a little bit more grayed out. And it creates a sense of depth. Here, I thought it kind of flattened the image a little bit at times. Um, and like I said, it, it felt a little foggy at times or filtered, if you will. Um, but overall, I, they did some really nice things that we'll talk about when we get to that, when I break down the scenes. But comparing the disc to the 4K HDR on iTunes, it's pretty much identical. It really was. Uh, and that says more about the disc. OK, because I didn't think, like I said, the, di the, the image is very nice on the disc, but. It wasn't so great that with a little bit of compression, you're going to lose a lot. So I think going between the two, you, it's definitely worth grabbing, you know, renting it on uh, iTunes for, like I said, $3.99. Um, and the other thing is I just come off doing Monster Hunter. I'm doing Lord of the Rings at the beginning of each month, each movie. And Monster Hunter last week was so stunning. The picture is so great that you come off of that and you look at this and it's very hard to compare, very hard to compare. This, this is a very nice image, but it's nothing compared to what Monster Hunter had or, of course, the Lord of the Rings series. All of the images in that are so nice. So comparing to that, it's not even... Not fair, really, <laughs> but comparing, you know, Morgan Disc versus Morgan Streaming, very, very close. As far as sound, though, very close. Now, I played this back and forth. I played it on the disc. I played it through my Zipidi using the DTS Master Audio, but I also upmixed this in both formats 
uh, with um, DTS HD with Neural X up mixing. And that goes for the Apple iTunes as well. I use my Apple TV to do this. And the sound is almost identical, almost indistinguishable, almost. It's not exactly. It's it, You can tell the difference when you're going back and forth. Like I would, like instantaneously, I just flip the thing and it takes a second for the thing to go over and I can hear the next scene and I can hear the difference and feel the difference. That was the bass in the, um, the iTunes stream wasn't as deep and it wasn't as visceral. So like on some of the scenes that I'm going to talk about, when you can feel the punch in your chest or there's a vibration in the room, it wasn't as much as it was on the disc, the streaming that is. Now, it, that's not to say it wasn't there. It was there. And I think that if you went between, like you watched this at somebody's house streaming and said you really liked it or they had it on disc and you went home and rented it for, you know, on iTunes, I don't think you would notice a difference because it was so minor that you could you could actually just say, well, my room's a little different than that room was, so that could be the part the reason that it's a little bit different. Um, you know, sound absorption from one room to another might be less or more. So things like there's so many variables that if you just got this on the streaming, I think you would be very happy with it. And if you liked it, then you wanted to own the disc, then. It only costs you four bucks. So what's the big deal there? Um, but the overall sound I thought was really good. Uh, both audio tracks were a lot of fun and worthy of a home theater setup. I, I was expecting more going into this movie. I gave this just one box of popcorn for sound. I didn't give it any boxes of popcorn for picture because like I said, it was just nice. It wasn't poor. It, I didn't find it distracting from the movie, but I, there wasn't anything to rave about as far as picture quality. They did some nice things with the picture that I'll get into with the, uh, the way they shot some scenes and stuff, but it's the, as far as the sound goes, it's definitely the sound definitely enhances this movie. If you watch this on a regular TV with regular speakers, you won't get nearly the experience that you'll get by watching this in a theater. Um, I think it actually, it, it brings more to the movie, more meaning to some scenes. It brings uh, more uh, engagement. There's, it's way more fun. It's, it is, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a home theater movie ride like, again, like Monster Hunter was, but it's it's a more cerebral movie, yet kind of leave your brain at the door because of what's going on here. But there was a lot of things that, deeper scenes that were caused because of the sound and stuff. And it, like I said, a lot of great home theater engagement, stuff going on all around the room, just not a ton of it. So we only have, I think I have 19 scenes. Typically I get between 30 and 40 scenes for a, a good action movie. But this was really, really good really good. I enjoyed it a lot. And I, like I said, I don't think you'd be disappointed with picking this up. If, if you're on the fence, rent it. It's a pretty good watch. I really, really enjoyed it. So that'll do it for my review of it. Now let's get into the scenes because the popcorn is popping now. And that means we're going to get into spoilers. So if you haven't seen it yet, stop go watch the movie, come back, and I'll give you the more in-depth version of each scene that I found home theater worthy and home theater fun. So, all right, that's it for the popcorn. The popcorn is going, and we'll get to what we always get to, the opening scene. Very crisp, very clean look. It's, I mean, you, you come right in, and you're, you have this overhead shot. It's very clinical and very appropriate for what this movie is about, too. And the sound is really cool. As computer glitches going on, and they're going on almost instantaneously in the left and right, but they're slightly staggered, like maybe a little bit like on each side, like, but it, it's really cool. And the screen kind of shakes a little bit and it gives a nice sense of depth of sound there. Really, really cool. I, I like the way this one looks. Um, I like those scene here. And if you look at the picture there, you'll see her hands. Now we're into spoilers, so I can give this away because we're into spoilers. So if you're watching this, I'm about to spoil everything. But that, I did not see this the first time I watched it. If you're on YouTube and you see the image that's on the screen, her hands have the 
squares around them. They're highlighted. She's about to go, you know, haywire for all intents and purposes. So if you look at that, like her hands are about to, I didn't see that the first time I saw the movie because I didn't know that it was going to play out multiple times in the movie, the hands or uh, a synthetic person looking at their hands like this. And so I thought that was cool here coming back and seeing that the on the review. But the sound here, as she goes nuts, when Morgan goes off, the clarity of sound is both off-putting and fantastic at the same time. It's like you can hear each stab going right into her eye. And the bass ramps up at about 130 to a nice, deep, vibrating feel that shakes your room. It's like you could feel it in your seat. I could actually feel it in the arms. It wasn't just underneath me. It was really nice. Then the shot goes to another crisp detail shot out over the water. So we get right from there. You go out and check out the waves there. I didn't screen grab that one, but the way the detail in the waves. But then that pans over the land and goes to the next scene, which I really liked. It was over the bridge. And that one there reminded me of the beginning of Gemini Man. And they were using that. They were shooting a lot of structures and stuff to show the 60 you know, frames per second actually shot in 120 frames per second in 3D. But when you watch this on at home, you get 60 frames per second. It's so crisp. It's so detailed. It's like so nice. This was very close to that, these scenes. And I thought that they were doing this here, the, the image of the bridge was an idea of like the artistic, you know, homage to the man's creations and engineering type thing, which is what kind of this movie is about what Morgan is. And by the time we get to the end, we think we realize she's the one that's gone wrong, but like they, they open the movie with like a, a nice detailed shot of a, an engineering feat, like a bridge like this, a suspension bridge. So I thought that was pretty cool, but we also get a very great, and repetitive deep bass note here that just starts shaking your room over and over as the scene plays out and then um fades it fades out and things stop shaking but you'll feel it with each bass note in your chest so it like starts really big and then it kind of fades out even while you're getting the dialogue from brian cox which is to me which is the giveaway for this movie right here it's like right away, it's like Brian, for some reason, because of, I don't know, Bourne movies or whatever, all the movies he's in, maybe typecast is that, you know, overseer of bad things. <laughs> but he, that's what I was thinking of with him. Right away, you get his voice, voiceover talking to Kate Mara and you're, you're like, okay, Kate Mara is one too. And I thought... It, let's get that out on the table right now. You know, we're in spoilers. She turns out to be the better version, which it was version four, I think is what they called it. But at the, you find out this all at the end, but Kate Mara did such a great job of acting this scene, this, this entire movie out that you, you knew she was one, but they didn't tell you until the, they didn't actually explicitly tell you, but throughout the entire movie, they tell you because of the way she's acting. Um, so I thought that, I thought it was fun all the way through, even though, you know, it wasn't a big spoiler at the end for me, but I figured I'd wait till spoilers to say that. Um, but anyways, oh, all right, here, where was I? Anyways, uh, getting the dialogue from Brian Cox. Yeah. And all the way up until Kate pulls out the gate and we get a very, uh, discreet sound of her pushing the speaker button button easy for me to say pushing the speaker button on the left hand side and then the guard speaking through the speaker really cool i like that you know i like those little pans but everything after everything that's been going on you can actually hear her i think she's pushing the button or something it's a click or something over there on the left then the guard speaks and then she pulls up and then we get the car door as she, when she gets out to her car door, she closes the car door. And I thought this was weird. I played this quite a few times when she closes it, there's an echo. So the door closes at the middle of your room and the sound comes from the middle front, but there's a slight echo off to the left rear, left side rear of your room. And I played it again and again, and it was, it, I liked it. And I was like, is that, cause it's like, 
it wasn't an echo that would fill the room, like, but there was a definite little slight echo there. Something like it bounced off something specific over on the left. I thought that was pretty cool. But then as far as far as echoes go, this was really cool. At four minutes and four seconds, we go into we go inside the house and check out how much echo they put into this scene. Clearly using the sound to demonstrate that this house isn't lived in. That no carpets really, no, I mean, there's a little floor carpet, but nothing thick, nothing plush. There's a, a little tiny couch there that has barely any cushioning on it. It's a very, you know, not lived in house that has no, it, no pillows and it, very dark. It's very dimly lit, as you can see from the image on YouTube. And it's, it's basically, it's not a house. It's a research facility. There's no love in this house. It's utilitarian. As much as the rest of the movie, they're trying to tell you that they love Morgan and there's a lot of love here and it's not, I think they're all living in fear, <laughs> but it's when, as soon as you walk into the, this house, it's just an empty shell of a house and that reverb and that echo that they put into their voices in the initial conversation of them walking into this house, I thought was very powerful and I thought it was very effective in translating that idea. I thought it was really cool. Really cool. This one here at six minutes and 21 seconds, I thought was, I, I listened to this one over and over and the image on the screen on YouTube, it's, so we have uh, Rose Leslie's Dr. Amy and Rose Leslie from Game of Thrones. I can't remember what her character name was in there, uh, but she was in Game of Thrones. But anyways, if you look at the image on YouTube, or at the timestamp of it exactly six minutes and 21 seconds, look at the bottom right corner of your screen. So she's sitting on the bed and in the bottom right corner, you see a clock. When you get there, look at that, pause at 621, then push play, go push play. Now listen just above your screen and over your head through the conversation of, you know, Dr. Amy and Kate Myra's Lee. All you can hear up there is the clock ticking. And there's plenty of silent moments between their, in their conversation, between their, what they're saying, you know, there's dead silence and you hear that, which I thought was awesome. And I'm like, what does that mean? What are they trying to say? Are they saying Lee is on the clock here? Like you've got to get this stuff done. You're like, okay, what, what's going on? Or are they saying that Dr. Amy's time is almost up? It's like, I don't know, but that was very, I, I don't think it was an accident. I think that was very purposeful and it's very subtle, but it's there and it's above the sound is above the screen, or at least it's perceived to be above the screen, which I think is really, really cool at 17 minutes and 20 seconds, the room. So now we're meeting Morgan for the first time and funny how this was made in 2016 and the first thing we see is Anya Taylor-Joy, who's playing Morgan. And the first thing we see her doing is playing chess. And the first time I saw her was in Queen's Gambit, which came out in 2020. Because I hadn't seen this yet at the time when I saw Queen's Gambit. So I was like, and I, to be fair, I kind of think Queen's Gambit was the bigger movie or the bigger event for her. Because that thing, I mean, chess boards around the world were being sold out because of that show on uh, Netflix. But anyways, I thought it was pretty funny. The first thing we see her doing here is playing chess. So that was pretty cool. But slight giveaway here too, that they didn't really elaborate on. And I'm wondering if I didn't see if I didn't even research if there's a behind the scenes or if there's a book that this is based on and people know anything more about this. But she obviously has the capacity to manipulate computers with her mind. She can manipulate the sound in a room. They, they, it's a very quick thing, but they say that here, like, can you turn it down? She doesn't touch anything. Just the, the, um, classical music goes down in the room, which was really cool. Uh, but it was just a very quick thing. And of course, you know, she's gathering all the information of information of each new character that comes into her life. She gathers, gathers it through the internet, which I thought that was really cool. But getting back to the home theater aspect of this, listening to the room, listening to the, oh, the septic time, like it's just so like, 
it's supposed it's so clinical in here and it's like you can hear the ventilation on the right side of the room you can hear the computer sounds even the score is really subtle at first as we see Lee and Morgan start speaking to each other and the echo in the dialogue as we move back and forth from each room from each side of the glass I should say instead of saying each room you see when we're in Morgan's room Lee is echoed and when we're in Lee's room or Lee's side of the glass, Morgan is echoed. And then they switch back and forth and the ventilation sounds on the right of your room shut off and on. So I believe it's on Lee's side of the glass that we hear that ventilation noise on the right side of your room. But a lot of, a lot of thought and design went into the audio in this seemingly simple scene. Sim like simple audio wise, you'd think it'd just be two people talking and never mind the idea that, you know, she can turn off music with her mind, but this entire thing is like, it's really setting the stage of what, what Morgan is exposed to and the, you know, the, the clinical atmosphere that she's stuck in and that she, of, of course she wants to get out of, but it's all enhanced by the sound of scenes like this. And then at 1949 mirrored, this is a scene where I think the picture really helps tell the story as well. And it kind of foreshadows a little bit. And it's at night, like I said, at 1949, I called it mirrored and Morgan and Lee are at the glass, very close to the glass, talking to each other. And Lee's reflection is right on top of Morgan's. So there's a line down the middle. It's an awesome image. But Morgan's image through the glass and Lee's reflection have the same depth of color, which is to say it's lacking. Because if you look on the right side of the screen, you're seeing Lee with Kate Mara with no glass between the camera and us. So there's no washout of like the, of her really dark sweater and her dark hair. The blacks are nice and deep on that side. But then the, the side of Morgan, which is through the glass and it's Lee's reflection, you get a really, I mean, everything seems slightly less, slightly more washed out. And I, I just, I love how they did that. I love how they did this shot, but their faces overlapping each other with that line down the middle. It's just, there's so much meaning here that like, you know, they're one in the same, they are mirror images of each other, whatever you want to say, there's so much you can do with just this one shot. And then the movie jumps ahead. We're going to jump ahead to 3153 and we get the same idea here, but there's no line down the middle. There's nothing separating them. And it's Dr. Amy and Morgan and they're talking through that same glass. But now the images, neither image is washed out. They're equals. And I felt like our, this is just between these two scenes, which are like 10 minutes apart, 11, almost 12 minutes apart. They're, they're, these two images are telling the entire story of this movie. Whereas in the previous image, they're separated by that line down the middle saying they're two different people. They're going against each other, but Kate Mara is going to be the bolder. She was going to win because Lee is all washed out, right? <laughs> I'm not wrong. I mean, that is actually what that image looks like that I'm showing on YouTube. And then you go to the image at 3153 of the reflection. They're equals. They care about each other. They're, they're equal to each other. They consider each other equal. So their images on the screen, which are dealing with the same situation, the same glass, they're not muted. There's nothing. There's just, it's one's a reflection, one's not, but you're still getting it. It works really nice. Oh, and by the way, in the same image, you see Morgan's reflection in the glass on um, Dr. Amy's side. But check out where it is. And like I said, go to the 3153 if you're not on YouTube. Go bring it up at home if you rent it or own it. But go on YouTube and it's it's Morgan's image inside Dr. Amy's head. What does that mean? Now, this these two images don't play nearly as well when you watch it on your on a regular TV. And I went and watched these upstairs on my 55-inch TV with the regular, I have a sound bar, not even just the speakers. And it didn't, I have a Sono sound bar and it didn't play nearly as well. Um, the sound of the, you know, the ambience in the room and everything, 
Obviously, you're not getting that. You're getting the dialogue. It's nice and clear, but there's no heightened sense of, of drama here from all the little nuances. And the images on the screen, they're not nearly as grand as they would be with a 75, 85 or a projection screen. There, It's just such, it, it, it makes such a big difference. That's why I think even in these two scenes here in a home theater setting make a big difference to the movie. It brings you, it sucks you into the movie so much more. And that's why like, it's so important to see these movies the way they're meant to be seen. Um, but yeah, let's move along to 3409. Snap. In this scene, Morgan feels bad for a um, mortally wounded deer. Been stabbed in the side, fell down, stick went through him. Hmm. Do you see any foreshadowing coming here? Uh, but she feels bad for the deer and you, you see this coming and she uses her strengths to, str to like just snap its neck. I knew it's coming, but it was still very jarring be because of the sound, the sound that the, that snap is so clear, but the echo through the forest and it starts out as sound throughout your room, seemingly everywhere. And then trailing off to the left rear of the room, which was kind of cool. You, I, I've had echoes like that that trail off all around your room. Like they just fade all around you. But this one was like, boom. And then it actually went away in a direction to the left. It was, it was pretty cool. At 3501, gate. This one here, one of my favorites. But Lee is coming back to the compound. I call it a compound. After a run. And she pushes the button on that same gate again. And the gate opens on the left. So that's pretty cool. And I love stuff like that. But also listen to the other sounds they have in here. It's like the score that has, it has that knocking sound that's hovering in the middle of the room and fading out slightly. It's like, it, I, I, I can't do it, but it, it just keeps going in and out. You, you got that going on. Other parts of the score are bouncing back and forth from the left and the right and the wildlife sounds spread out around the room and all of that. And you can hear each footstep on the gravelly driveway as well as she makes her way up. It, it's, it, it was really, really a very, another very in-depth scene that could be, Otherwise, be just like, oh, okay, she's walking up the driveway or running up the driveway. It was really, really cool. But that's one that I went back and forth on a few, on for a few times, actually. It was kind of fun. All right. Oops. Moving on to 39 minutes even. Psyche Val. We get Paul Giamatti for a little bit. <laughs> Dr. Shapiro, he sits down with Morgan for his psyche eval. Spoiler. Yeah, we didn't all know poor Paul wasn't going to make it out of that room, was he? Uh, but anyways, we're back in the cozy confines of Morgan's room and we get more ambient sounds, air vents, uh, a repeating mechanical pinging noise going off, paper shuffling, pen writing, chair creaking when he's moving back and forth. And then the dialogue is fantastically done in this scene. A lot going on here. First, you get reverb from inside the room, like just them being in the room because her room is so like empty. It's just her. So they're giving you that, that little bit of echo in her room. But then the sound of their voices changes to an echoed speaker when we're placed outside of the room looking in. And when we're placed at the side of the table, the voices are placed appropriately on the side of the screen that the characters are on. And then when we're looking at them straight on, a character that's talking, we get the voice right at the center of the screen. And the bouncing camera shots, sometimes right in the middle when being spoken, like when words are being spoken, it makes the sound of their voice jump from one part of the room to the other, which makes this pretty methodical interview which is it's supposed to be methodical that's what paul giamatti's going for dr shapiro he's trying to to set her up and trigger her and he's doing it in a methodical way so that could be relatively boring but with the way they're setting this up with the with the audio you're it's way more dynamic than it would be otherwise Something, and again, something you don't get with your regular TV speakers. Because if you go upstairs and watch this on a sound bar or wherever in your house, I happen to have to go upstairs. 
Maybe you live on a flat house. I don't know. But if you go to just a TV with a sound bar or just its regular speakers, everything I just described all comes from the same spot. It's not bouncing around your room, at least not with the same effect. And this all plays out, building the intensity, even adding in some nice deep bass jump scenes. They come in here, they they do a flashback to her killing the deer. I mean, but it goes all the way up to 47 minutes and 12 seconds. And we get show me. And that's, I call it show me because that's Paul Giamatti screaming, show me. What does that mean? What does it show me? Excuse me. <laughs> wow. See, getting all excited here. So yeah, Dr. Shapiro, he's trying to push her and he pushes her too far. But this is where we go to that scene where she's looking at her hands. And that's where we find out, like, that's the, the, the hands. It means something. She's about to go haywire again, like she did at the beginning of the movie. And it actually plays out, obviously, later in the movie when we see, you know, Kate Mara looking at her hands in the exact same way. Looking at the tops, looking at flipping them over, back and forth. And so that's, I don't know if that's a glitch in their matrix or what it is. They don't understand themselves. Like I said, it's kind of thought provoking this movie. But anyways, the most notable part of this scene here is that it's the visceral reverb in the score here. Again, you won't get this on your soundbar. It, it was vibrating my room underneath the rest of the score and Paul Giamatti yelling. It was there, but it was jumping back. I mean, it. It was there and it was like, it was coming up through the seat and it, even into my armrests. And this is a good example of when you go to the iTunes um, stream, same thing. It was there. It just didn't come up as much. It wasn't as, it didn't have as much of a tactile feel to it, but it was still there. And again, if you went from, you know, your house to your buddy's house or whatever and went back, you probably wouldn't feel a difference because you still get a really good feel out of the iTunes iTunes stream. It's just not as deep. It's not as much. But again, it, it, it's really, it, if you just lived with one of them, you, you're very, you're doing very, very well. And it, great use of low, deep bass here. And, sp oh, and speaking of bass, the next one, 48, 18, 48 minutes and 18 seconds. Yeah, 48 minutes, 18 seconds. Alarms. We get the alarms going off. And of course, when you're in a building, where do they place most of the alarms? They're high up on the walls. So that, that high pitch sound will spread out to everybody. So of course, these sounds sound like they're coming from high up in your room. But there's also a deep lockdown sound. Like you can hear that. And it comes, again, very low with a lot of feel to it. The score has a lot of repetitive deep bass as well. And just like the last, you know, scene, the, the bass here on the iTunes stream, just slightly less as deep. Not, not as deep, not as visceral, but very good on both sides. A lot of nice deep bass in this scene. Really nice. At 5940... We get a gunshot, and I gave this one one box of popcorn. Uh, really, really good. Uh, two pictures on this one particular scene that I want you to see. So at 5940, we, you set it up, and Lee is trapped in Morgan's room, and she's looking through the glass at Ted, who's been shot in the stomach, but and now he's just staring at her in disbelief because, you know, Morgan has shot him. Shot him. And... Then all of a sudden, and, oh, by the way, and Morgan's dead center in the middle of your screen staring at you. And then at exactly 5945, we get a gunshot off camera to the left, very clear, very deep. And then you hear it, it hit him in the center. It's like instantaneous, like bang. And then, and then you hear a splatter on the wall to the right. It's, I mean, the gunshot to the left, you hear it hit him in the middle of the screen, and then you hear the blood splatter on the wall to the right, and then you go to the second picture in this example, and that's at 5946, one second later, and you look at the wall, and it's, the wall has that blood splatter on it, and it's, it's just, 
it's so instantaneous. You have to watch the scene a few times to actually hear it progress right across because it's so fast. And they edited that in perfectly that it it's so well done. I, I It's like how the sound just travels right across the front stage of your room. It's it, really nice. Not so nice for poor Ted, but it was a really nice scene for us. <laughs> if you like watching people get shot. Sorry. Um, <laughs> let's move on. Uh, 10832 head on, uh, Lee and Morgan go head on here in a really fun choreographed fight scene. A lot of fun with the audio here as well. Punches and kicks, very clear, very visceral, uh, punt, you could feel the punches, the high pitch of the slaps of the hitting them in the, you know, the fists hitting people in the faces, but then the body kicks and just a lot of good action as they're throwing each other around the room. Just a lot of fun. Really enjoyed that scene at 109.21. We get a really powerful shot from this rifle here. So Skip is chasing them down as Morgan's trying to escape with Dr. Amy in a minivan. And Skip just shoots out the back window of the minivan. And it's a really nice, powerful gunshot. Really felt the power of that rifle in, in, like, in my chest. I, I just had to make note of that. And then the next scene at one hour 17 minutes and three seconds probably my favorite scene of the movie i gave this one two boxes of popcorn every time stamp when i went back and did this movie every time stamp i was like oh maybe the next one's this is the one i want to talk this is my favorite one i can't wait this is it i couldn't wait for this one and i didn't even realize it came this much later in the movie it's my second to last scene to talk about but lee lee's in the forest here and she can't find Morgan, so she's like, I got to imagine she's thinking, well, I'm going to let her know that I'm coming for her. So she sh fires a round of, with the uh, rifle just straight up into the air. The echo from this single shot, it echoes around your room, starting on the left side and moving behind you before dissipating away on the right side at about th the three o'clock position. It's like, then it goes, the the scene then immediately goes to Skip, who's at a different place in the fort. He's still on the path or by the road. And he hears the same echo, like the sound has traveled to him. And it, it now travels past you again in the same manner. But it travels, it doesn't travel consistency, like consistently like boom, like around your room in a consistent dissipating sound. It goes in a, like a, a wave. It goes woo, woo, woo. And like around your, it was so nice. It was like, again, there's so much like dynamicism to it. <laughs> I'm making up words. I'm so excited. It's, it, it was so much fun. And it's like, I, again, I played this one over and over as it traveled around and behind me and then went away on the other side. Like I said, around three o'clock. And the one to skip was, had slightly less volume to it, you know, slightly softer because he's a little further away, but it really, really cool. And it was just as good on the stream audio, maybe not as much punch to the initial shot, like the, when she fired it, not as much, you know, punch to the chest, but the rest around the room. And when it went around you with skip, when you're seeing skip, same thing, really nice. Uh, on the sound bar, bleh, nothing. <laughs> it was just, it literally was like, boom, and went away. There was nothing. <laughs> it was funny. At one hour, 21 minutes and 55 seconds, uh, racking. We'll end this, we'll end this movie with this scene here. Racking. Dr. Amy is, is going bye-bye. She has the gun in her hand. Lee takes the handgun, that is. He takes a handgun from Dr. Amy, and she walks off screen to the left. And the camera shot goes right on close up to Dr. Amy. So you have Lee off camera to the left, and you hear her rack the handgun. The chuk -chuk. And then the camera shifts right back. Now we're looking straight at Kate Mara. We're looking at Lee. She's got the gun outstretched, which you can see on YouTube gun is dead center on your screen and you get you know the nice bang and that you hear the casing eject 
from the gun right in the right front center. And the of course, you get the initial bang right front center. But then in the echo goes higher up into your room, like over your head and then just expands out from there. Really well placed sound. Really nice way to, you know, end this review <laughs> this is a great scene there was some nice deep bass later on as we get into the monologue back with uh explaining kate mara's role and lee and all of that but it was the this movie i thought like i said it, it's it's not a, a home theater type it's not a, a huge home theater experience but your home theater will definitely up the experience of this movie and i think actually make it a better movie if you just watch this in a regular room on a regular tv you'd probably just think oh that was a fun movie okay or you might not even like it but i think in your room this this one is definitely worth the rental and definitely worth checking out and uh check out all those scenes and uh, let me know what you think and that'll do it for this week Thank you for watching, and uh, thank you to my 13 patrons. Thank you very much, and thank you to Movie Blindspot and Tom on Twitter for following me on Twitter. As well, um, you can follow me on Twitter at BrightsideHT, or you can email me at BrightsideHomeTheater at gmail.com, or you can check out the website. Don't forget, BrightsideHomeTheater.com. And please, if you're watching this on YouTube, hit subscribe. And if you like the video, hit like too. If you didn't like the video, Eh, it doesn't hurt to hit like, I guess. But, all right, that'll do it for this week. Thank you guys very much. Hope you guys have a great week. I will be back next week with, um, I think I was inspired by something this week. So maybe we're going to be hitting on something next week that I've already talked about. So we'll see. I'll see you next week. Until then, go push play. <laughs>